Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Sunlit Waves project. Oh. This is part of our Waves of Change box and the whole theme of this box is to um, embrace the change. And I'm gonna read the quote one more time. I read it in one of the tutorials already, but yes. I think it's good. Sometimes in the waves of change, we find our true direction. Um, so in light of that quote, we are kind of challenging ourselves today. This is a little bit of a harder project. And oh. I will say that while we are painting it, you are going to be so lost. You're gonna be like, what is even happening? What am I trying to paint right now? Lost I mean, look at this me. outline and you're, gonna, you're gonna be like, I don't even understand. It looks happening. like fire. <laughs> it kind of does. So I just want to acknowledge that that is the nature of this project. I'm gonna ask you to be kind to yourself and to me, because I'm teaching you, and push through it. And remember that this is one of those projects where while you're painting it, you're gonna be like, I don't see this, I don't see this. And then you're gonna step away and then you're gonna be like, whoa, that looks like waves. Now hopefully, I see it. <laughs> hopefully that's, that's the hope. Okay, so we will be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we're gonna be putting in our dark values of our waves. And that is what this kind of shaded area of our outlines that's what the, mm. it's like the darkest values. Our second step is we'll be putting in our medium values. And then while it's wet, third step, we'll go back in and do more dark. Um, our fourth step is we'll be starting to put in like the highlights, the bleed proof white, and it will bleed. That's okay. You see how I have these like gorgeous, cool textures yeah. and blooms? We're really embracing things blending and bleeding and the hard edges and whatever. Um, today, it's gonna be fun. And then the very last step is just kind of doing the white highlights with bleed proof white and the little um, stars, glimmering stars on our water waves. Sweet. Okay? Okay. Now, we are using three paintbrushes. We have a two, a six, and a 12. Um, these are our, two and six are our go-to brushes. I like to use a 12 and a one inch every so often. And I cut my paper in half because this is um, a lot of paint. Okay. And it's sometimes easier to do like watercolor paintings that have a lot of paint just to make that paper a little bit smaller. They're a little bit easier to tackle that way. And then for our outline here, you can see it's not the full page. It's actually a six by nine outline, which is your paper cut in half. And you might be wondering what side is the top and what side is the bottom. So the top part is this big chunk. You see how there's this empty space uh, right yes. here. And that is going to be like our highlighted area here. Got you it. see? Yep. So if you're confused on which one's the top, this section is the top here. And I kind of just like made sure it kind of aligned with my paper. We will be using four colors today. We have Payne's Gray, we have Berry Blue, and we have Azure Blue, and Bleed Proof White is our fourth one. And I got my butcher tray here, which is what I love to use to paint, especially with liquids. Look at all this mixing room. Okay. Mm. Let's transfer our outline and then do our oath. Okay. So I'm gonna put my graphite paper shiny side down underneath. I'm gonna tape my outline to the top so it doesn't move. So this is a turquoise marker. Ooh, okay, cool. That way you guys can see what I'm tracing. And I just want to call attention to the fact that when you trace using like a soft tip marker, your line is automatically gonna be lighter. If you use like a, a pencil or a ballpoint pen, um, then that's gonna be darker just because these tips are so hard, okay? So, I like to do a couple and then kind of test and see how it looks. Good. That looks good. That's so cool every time. Now, the reason why I want you guys to do this outline is I want you to pay attention to the shapes and the brush strokes, the movement of this line. If you look at it, a lot of the lines that you're going to see are this. That kind of flamey thing, because that is the movement of the water of our waves. Okay. So this is a like just using your pen and getting used to this movement, the angle of these lines um, will be helpful for you while you start painting or before you start painting. Okay. 
It's so funny because I honestly redid this outline like four times because every time I lifted it up, I'm like, this looks too crazy. This looks too crazy. Like people are going to be so confused what's happening. And then um, I realized I'm like, this is just the nature of this project. And I'm just going to let it be and embrace it what it is and help you guys through it. And it will be okay. Yeah, this is a, an a lot outline. Yeah. Now, I am not outlining the hash marks. Um, the hash marks are a visual reminder for you of where there is a darker value. If it's helpful for you to put the hash marks in, you absolutely can because they will be a dark value, so they should be covered up at the end of the painting anyway. Um, but sometimes I'll use the outline and the reference photo both as my references while I'm painting things because then I can take a look back at the overall line work or the direction or the shadows because sometimes when we see something in color um, we or like the full thing, it's really easy for our eyes to get lost, especially if we're used to, if we're not used to seeing what our brain tells us to see. Because um, it actually takes practice and skill to like look at something and see it for what it is and not what our brain is telling you it is. Actually, I had this one experience. I was in a painting class and we had a TA who would come around and give us feedback as we were painting. And we were painting a still life and I'm, I'm like going and I there's like a highlight and I put a highlight where I think it is, but I could tell that I was struggling seeing what was happening. Like I was just like, here's the highlight. And the TA was watching me. He was like, hey, can I, can I ask why you put that highlight there? And I was like, cause it, I thought it was there and he was just like, okay. And he like took his hands and he cropped it down to where I wasn't seeing this whole thing. So I wasn't o o overwhelmed by the whole scene. He was just like, if you look closely, the highlight is actually on this section. Mm -hmm. And so like just him cropping it down, closing it, uh, my brain could see what was actually happening instead of being like, this is a huge detailed still life that I'm trying to paint. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So sometimes just being like, I'm going to separate myself from what my brain is telling me this is and just look at what I'm seeing. And sometimes looking at outlines helps us do that as opposed to full reference photos. Cool. All right. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to keep my outline handy. And we're just gonna do our oath and then we're gonna go for it. We didn't do our oath already, did we? No, we didn't. Okay. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's go. So I'm going to be working fairly quickly because we want these colors to blend and bleed together in a way that is cool. So I got to work quick. Um, so I'm just going to talk through what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Remember that you can always pause. So don't stress about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my very first step is I'm going to be putting in my dark values. So this is where looking at my outline might be a little bit more helpful than looking at my reference photo. Hmm. Cause I'm like, okay, this wishbone section here kind of is a dark outline. And this is also a great practice in seeing how things relate to each other. So this section's shadowed. So that's this section, this section's shadowed. That's this section, the section underneath. You see these like shapes that are starting to pop out. Yep. Okay. Let's do it. So I'm going to take That's super helpful. Yeah. Okay, good. Wow. Keenan's feeling good. So I'm going to take some Payne's gray. I'm going to take my berry blue and I'm going to take some azure blue because I'm trying to make just a really dark blue. Oh, look at this color. Isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful color. Gosh. Okay. So, and just overall, if you look at this painting, the darkest values are on the bottom and slowly it gets lighter as it goes up. And the largest highlighted part is in this top left quadrant with little highlights coming from there. So this is the angle of our sunlight here. And we're gonna work and build our values up, but the heaviest and darkest values are on the bottom here. Okay, let's go for it. 
boop, 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 boop. And I'm just putting it in. I'm not trying to follow the outline exactly. You don't have to do that. Okay, but this is where you might get lost. So, boop, 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 let's go here. And just remember that like, the worst thing that can happen is you just have to kind of adjust where the highlights and the shadows are, which is not like that big of a deal. And then at this point, I'm gonna kind of just like take what I laid and spread it out. Lifting my brush every once in a while for the highlighted sections, especially when we get to this area. But really what we're looking for here is just like different values. And it's okay, you see how these lines are blending out? My dark values? Yes. That's okay. Don't stress out about that. That's kind of what we want to happen. And then think about the direction of your brush. Think about those marks that we made. Okay. We're gonna keep going. So I kind of did that first half. We're gonna keep going along the top. Where's my shadows? Here, here. And I kind of want you to recognize that down here, our waves were a little bit thicker and then as we move our way up and backwards into our painting, our waves get a little bit thinner. Our line work and our chunks get a little bit oh. thinner. So we're kind of doing step one and two simultaneously right now. So I put in my darks. Because you have to do it fast. Because I'm doing it fast. So a lot of the time I like to put in my darks and then I'm going in and blending out and putting in my medium. And this is what I mean where you're probably sitting here being like, I can't even tell where I am in this painting. <laughs> and I feel that way too. And I felt that way when I was creating this pro project. So don't give up. Okay. That's a good start. I'm going to start there. Now, while it's wet, I need to go back in and put in, re-put in some of my dark areas. Because I put in my dark, put in my medium, blended them out, and now I want to kind of like make sure they're nice and dark. But again, our paper is kind of wet. So we're gonna see these kind of like start to move and bleed out. And this is where I want you to kind of rely on just generally looking at your outline here as a guide and also the overall movement of this. So these are nice thick brush strokes. This is a crazy project. It is. Stick with it, you guys. You've got it. And if you don't believe you, you believe us. We believe in you. <laughs> believe Keenan. Believe me. <laughs> and then as I'm making my way up and putting in these kind of darker values, you notice how my brush stroke is thinning out. And if you think about a wave that goes up. That's a pencil. Okay, a wave that goes up, okay. The sunlight is coming from above, which means this edge is going to be the highlighted part. And then right underneath is where we're gonna have that dark value. Mm. And then it kind of smooths out and then it happens again. Highlight from that top of that wave hitting out, dark right underneath, smooths out. 
And it's kind of that same thing that runs into each other. And then as it moves back into space, these waves are gonna shrink and get thinner. So we have this big, this big wave, this big wave, and then it just kind of tends to do this. Okay? Cool. So if you're thinking like, where are my values here? Why are my val like, where am I putting my values? Think about that water. Think about highlight, shadow, medium. And it's kind of like that same pattern throughout. Okay, that's like a simplified way, but maybe that will help you guys not feel a little bit lost right now. Ooh, I left my paintbrush in the water. I can't Ooh, believe I did move. that. Ooh, party foul. Okay. I don't know what a party foul, I don't know what that phrase means. <laughs> we don't need to talk about it. Because <laughs> I'm not entirely sure myself if I'm being honest. I think I know how to use it. I did not go to parties when I was in high school. Like, I know it's a thing, but I don't actually know what it means, and you totally call me Sorry, out on it. Sorry, I didn't mean it. I think it means that you do something that, like, you're not supposed to do. Like, there's certain rules culturally. Like, it's a foul. It's a foul. You messed up. Bad move, bro. Bad move, bro. Okay, that's why. Yeah, no, I knew that. But really, I don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're looking at this painting, and you're thinking... What's even happening right now? Your eyes now? are getting heavy. Your <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what you were really getting into, <laughs> hypnosis. <laughs> so we have some medium values. We have some dark values. Now I'm going to go in and put in some like medium light values, especially in this upper left hand here. So I have my different blues here. I just added some water. I'm just going to kind of go in and just kind of following along my reference photo. I'm gonna look at where there are some lighter values and kind of just start. You can even just use water and try and spread out the color that's already there. And just remember that if you paint over an area that you wanted to leave highlighted, we're gonna put white in here. So it's not the end of the world. If you can leave some sections just plain white, do so. So I'm kind of just like thinking about these movements and these waves that are kind of blending into each other layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, okay? And I cannot emphasize to you guys enough while I was painting this how lost I was to the point where I was just like, <laughs> I don't know if I could teach this. Like, I, I, this, is, this is hard, but then I thought, you know what? It's okay for us to push ourselves. It's okay for us to challenge ourselves. And sometimes doing the things that we're uncomfortable with, myself included, and hopefully you guys, is we learn from it and we grow from it faster than if we just stayed the same and didn't try and push ourselves and didn't try and do harder things. You may not have to emphasize it because they may also be feeling it. Yeah. You know, they yeah. might feel lost right now. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we absolutely get it because we're feeling the same way. <laughs> so I'm just kind of, okay. So at this point a little bit, we can kind of start to see at least the highlights that's happening here and maybe a little bit of that movement of that water. Totally. So now I'm gonna go in, things have kind of bled and dried where they are and I'm gonna go in and just kind of, again, put in some shadows if you wanna grab your your outline here, which at this point it could look very different, but just kind of use that as a little bit of a guide of being like, I don't even know where to start. Okay, well at least try and um, pick a place that you think that there's a shadow and let's go for it. Just gonna kind of blend some of these out here. These big white chunks. I want some of them to stay white, but I feel like the thickness of them is throwing my eye off. So I'm just gonna thin them out a little bit. Cause they're there, but not necessarily that wide. Okay, down here I'm starting to feel like this is starting to feel good. I'm kind of looking at it going, okay, okay. 
there might be some water happening here. It makes me think like this is one of those pictures or a, a video clip where they are close to this to the water and then they're gonna slowly pan up mm -hmm. and show a huge body of water, you know? Yeah. That's what it makes me feel like. I can totally see that. It's very cinematic in my head. It's a beautiful scene. Beautiful. There's poetry being written. Maybe a guitar. <laughs> Are you going to start singing for us? I wish I knew a song to sing other than Christmas songs are the only thing that's <laughs> in my head right now. I'm not sure why. Is it because your birthday's on Christmas? I don't think so. <laughs> Is that why they're your favorite? But just so everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is where you can mail gifts. <laughs> Christmas is in for a while. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, I'm gonna blend this out just a little bit, just a little bit, okay. Now is where I'm gonna just start putting in bleed proof white, seeing where we go, okay? I got my bleed proof white, I have a round six, I'm gonna pick up some of that white and then I'm gonna look at where these highlights are on my painting. So this kind of section right here, I'm just gonna go in, put in a little bit of white right here. And maybe a little thin one here. Okay, we're just gonna let that be for a second. What? What was that face? What did I do? You, you put the white line in. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that I did that. That was funny. So again, think about this kind of shape as you're putting it in, okay? And so much of it is just going to be like, we're going to put it in and it's going to bleed and we're just going to see where we're at and then make adjustments, okay? Now this white line here is throwing off my eye, so I'm going to put that in. And you can use different blues. Like I just picked up straight berry blue. Look how gorgeous that blue is. Yeah. And it is different than the blue that's on my painting already. And instead of going, oh no, I don't have that blue. I'm gonna be like, yeah, I like this blue. And I'm gonna do it more. Sometimes if you do an accident or you make an accidental mark, if you just make that mark on purpose a few more times, it's no longer an accident. And then you're like, yeah, I meant to do that on purpose this whole time. If you even want to like blend out some of the bleed proof white, go for it. This one, I know that I've talked about how like painting with bleed proof white can create an opaque layer. And that, you know, could sometimes be a textural problem within your painting. But this one, we're okay with it. We're going for it. So I'm just kind of like letting. the white move do its thing. And this is where we kind of go off script from each other because you need to look at what's happening in your painting and then compare that to your reference photo and like just section by section go through, okay, I need to make a little bit of a shadow here and this one is a shadow that's happening here. And you just kind of keep going through. And maybe where I put a shadow, you didn't. So this is where 
following me at this point, um, you might get more lost because my painting is probably looking way different than your painting right now. Okay, I don't think that needs to be here. I'm gonna move that. And remember that kind of flame shape that we're going for. Okay. Now we're going to go up to the top half of our painting and essentially do the same thing but with not as many dark values and thinner brush strokes. Okay. And I can still see some of my outline up here, which is great. And if you need to switch to your two for these thinner areas, go for it. Or if you feel like you can get that control with a six. I think one of my favorite aspects to watercolor is the ability to kind of like blend and soften. And I notice like when I try and paint with other mediums, I'm always like wanting to just take my damp brush and just kind of like work an area and see how that softens. It makes the transition smooth, all that stuff. But I feel like it with watercolor, it's like, easier to do that <laughs> possible to do that um, where like oil I end up making like a really muddy mess actually mm. so it's just kind of um, just kind of funny how different mediums behave differently and that's a great way to have a favorite though one yeah. that agrees with you more yeah mm -hmm. one you're more comfortable with and and there are some like that's why I love just like trying new things every once in a while where like, I have not, honestly, I haven't tried acrylic in a long time. Cause it's just not, it's just not my favorite thing. It's just not, and that's okay. But um, Lori, who's our new acrylic instructor, she messaged me yesterday and she was like, hey, do you wanna like be on a tutorial with me? And I was just like, Yes. Ooh, cool. That's going to be so fun. And I got really excited and I have no idea how it's going to go. And I don't even necessarily like acrylic, but I'm excited to give it a shot again because maybe I'm at a different space where I'm just like, actually, this is really cool. Or, you know, like. Yeah. And it would help to have a guide. Absolutely. And Lori's great. She is great. I like her. Okay, now, now at this point, we can be like, okay, I can, for the most part, see where my highlighted areas are. I'm gonna just lighten this section over here. Like the overall shape is starting to feel a little bit better in terms of like movement. I love these colors. Yeah? Yep. It feels a little icy blue. Yeah. And I'm just going in with my bleed proof white and kind of being pretty liberal with where I'm putting it because I know worst comes to worst, I can paint on top of it, I can blend it out. Like, 
At this point, I'm just trying to make sure that I have different um, values overall to start getting kind of the dimension and the movement. And this is where I also kind of want to step back and see where am I seeing patterns that I don't want to be seeing patterns. Like I've noticed that I have a section. You oh, see that? I did not. Well, this is where it's good to step back and take a look at things like that. And I'm just going to kind of blend that out. Okay, and now I'm going to really look at like this section down here. I feel like this, 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 this is kind of too evenly spaced. And I feel like I, it got really dark down here. So if that, so you can let light back in with watercolor by just lifting. So if I'm like, it just, I lost all of my values in this bottom left hand corner and it looks actually a little bit more flat than I intended it to. Drop some water. And lift and then kind of reshape it and then it's just like okay there we go now I got some differences in my values here you can even if you wanted to almost take your bleed proof white and a little bit of blue and mix it on your palette and now you have like an opaque blue Ooh. that you can use if you want I love that okay so this is where I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm looking at my painting generally the shape is about the same I'm noticing some big differences though one of them is this white highlight that goes all the way to the edge is not necessarily here so I'm going to thin that out I need a little bit more of a white highlight here and here for this section okay so use your use your reference photo as kind of just a general guide in that way where you're just like uh, I don't know about this section or I like this section or what adjustments do I need to make over here And don't be afraid to use just the straight, I'm using just straight, Keenan, can you calm down? These tables keep jumping out at me. <laughs> These tables and chairs keep attacking me. I'm using just straight Azure at this point, right here. I was using straight Berry a little bit earlier and that's just because I want these like strong pops of color. And I feel like I need to lift a little bit of color out of here. So just like mess with it. And for those of you who are thinking, wow, I'm not so sure about this, just wait. Oh, I'm sold. Yeah? I can see it. You can see the waves? Oh, yeah. Good, because I'm like, Ooh, I don't know about this. And again, I'm thinking about that kind of fire. And it's thinner near the top because it's farther away from us, right? Okay, I think this section is kind of throwing off my eye. blue over here. Okay.
just kind of softly blending out some areas. I sometimes when I'm painting and there's just a section that keeps drawing my eye to it and something's bothering me but I'm not sure what it is. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of blend it out and then come back to it. So it's just like, okay, I know that there's something off. Like if I'm looking at, let me show you an example. I'm trying to find a section that's like really bothering me. This line is really bothering me in my painting. I don't know what it is. Hmm. I don't know if it's the curve of it or if I feel like it's just not doing what I want it to do and I can't figure out what needs to change but I feel like something needs to change. I'll just blend it out. And then I can always go back into that area and do highlights or do lowlights or kind of reshape it. So sometimes just getting rid of it helps my eye to move on to other sections of my painting. So it's not necessarily solving the problems right then. Maybe it's just about eliminating the distraction so you can keep going to other sections of your painting without like overworking an area. Okay. Let's do a little bit of a highlight or a low light here. Boop. And maybe here and kind of checking for those patterns that I'm trying to eliminate that my brain really wants to create. Okay. Overall that feels similar to my reference photo, okay? Super cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna really focus on just the highlighted sections, okay? So I'm gonna take my bleed proof white and like, okay, I'm gonna do this section. I got this section and I got this, this section. So I have a like medium value in there and then I'm gonna go in and do the highlights within that light and medium value. So I'm using the tip of my six, or you can use a two, okay? That, and maybe this one, it's just a thin boop at the top here. Okay, and this guy, there's one over here, so I'm just gonna put it in. And if you run into an area where like, there should be a more medium value happening in this section, you can go ahead and add that. This is where having bleed proof white gives us a little bit of, we can kind of treat it a little bit more like gouache instead of watercolor. So I'm kind of putting some highlights back in. Okay, then I'm just gonna move on. We got a little highlight over here. And along on this way. Okay. All right. And then what I'm going to do is kind of in between these highlights where I have a lot of color and value and all of this stuff, there might be some areas that I want to soften. So looking at this section right here, you see all the different strokes, line, 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 line. And here it's a little bit smoother. So I'm just gonna take my brush, my damp brush, and I don't wanna totally lose all my different values, but I don't need them to be as hard and defined as what I did. So I can just go in with the damp brush and smooth. And just kind of soften some of these areas that maybe I've gotten a little bit too edgy. Mm. It took it a step too far. Took it a step and we're like, calm down, okay? We're nice here. Know your place. <laughs> and just kind of like smooth it out. That's always a comfort for me in watercolor. I can just smooth it out, soften it up. Like a good, soft stick of butter. Oh, 
nothing better. There's nothing better than butter on freshly baked bread. Amen. Amazing. Just. I felt that. Need softening. I feel like maybe here. All right, now what I'm going to do is we want this to dry because I'm gonna go in and put in my little stars. Oh. Okay? Okay. So we're gonna let this dry for a second. And I'm gonna take my one, my two, excuse me, my two paintbrush, and I'm gonna grab Bleed Proof White and then I'm gonna do these little like dots and then kind of do four things pulling out of them. Boop, boop. So creating that kind of glare. And then I got a little guy right about here. Now, even these little dots with these glares are gonna have like, some are gonna be smaller and some are gonna be bigger, okay? So you see like how tiny that one is compared to that one mm -hmm. is compared to that one. So just, just us, I'm saying that in terms of let there be variation within these glare spots in terms of the amount of glare that they're seeing. And if you go to put in some glare spots and you're just like, there should actually be a little bit of a stronger highlight here, go ahead and put in that strong highlight. We're using bleed proof white right now. We're using that strong highlight. We can put in any of the highlights that we lost. Don't you love those little sun glares? Yes. And if you try and do thin lines going out, you're not getting as thin as you want, just wipe your brush on your palette and get rid of that excess paint so you can get some nice glares. And you can overlap them too. Got really quiet. Now here, these glares aren't gonna show up as strong as at the bottom because again, they, these are kind of more light, lighter values that they're on top of. And that's okay because we want the overall like directional light that the underpainting gave us. Hmm, isn't it starting to pop a little bit more? Oh yeah. These, this needs a little bit stronger highlight here. And 
and do some like thinner detail work up here, you know? Our waves are getting thinner in between, so they're gonna get these kind of more detail lines in between our waves. Now I'm noticing one big thing is I lost my medium value right here, which I think brought a lot to the painting. So no problem, I'm just gonna go in with water, put it in this section, let it sit, and then I'm gonna lift it up. So some of these areas, I think I got a little bit paint happy and I lost some of my light. So I'll just go in and lift it up. Oh yeah, oh, wow. okay. I'm gonna do that a little bit just a little here, just a streak. A little bit there. Gosh, I love the color that I got from lifting that up. I know that first one? Yeah. I know. I'm gonna do a little bit down here. And right here. Now I'm just kind of like <laughs> going extra with lifting and I'm probably gonna, gonna recreate say. the problem again. <laughs> That's okay. I feel like that needed to soften. Okay. Gosh. First of all, I just want to show you guys something. I love what happened up here. Do you see that color? Well, yes. <laughs> I feel like that blue saturation really brought something to that upper left-hand corner. You know? I like, just love the lighter blue in, well, one where the paper towel picked up and then in the top right side, actually. Yeah. I love that lighter blue. Me too. Because I honestly could trick myself into thinking this is above clouds, above mountains. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes, I can totally see what you mean. I can trick myself into believing both situations are true. Yes. But I love this. And this, okay, at this point... If you're still feeling a little bit lost and you're still feeling like, I'm not sure if I'm seeing what's happening, I need you to either take a picture of this and look at it from your camera or walk away and look at this painting from the other side of the room. Two things will happen. One, you'll be able to see it for its entirety and not just like the little sections that you've been staring and we've been paying at for a little bit. And then it could give you more insight into some areas that maybe you need to address where you're just like, okay, this area I really like, but I still am getting a little bit lost here. I'm not sure what's happening in this area. And there's nothing wrong with, with saying that. There's nothing wrong with being like, um, I feel a little lost here. I'm not sure what I need to do. So I'm going to walk away from this painting just for a second and then I'll come back to it. But I feel like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm going to do a couple more detailed, I mean, I don't know if there's any more in my reference photo, but I feel like I need a couple more like glares, maybe in some of these area, like small ones. And we're winding down here, friends, we're winding down, just little hints. Kind of off the edge of the highlights that we have.
Cool. And maybe a little guy up here. I kind of like the little lone glare. Like that tiny itty bitty. Imagine two the little guys. The little guys, the little, here's a tiny bit of a glare. Yeah. It's so funny how I just want to keep messing with it. Funny like it's a surprise? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, this is who you are. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is you can sit and play with this for a long time. And there's nothing wrong with just sitting and playing for a long time. I mean, this is a good time to me where I'm just like, maybe a little bit more here, yeah. maybe here, you know, and just kind of going back in and out, seeing what you can do to bring in the, sh the shapes a little more. Like, but if you, it's when you start to feel yourself get frustrated that that's when it's a good time to maybe take a break and walk away from it just for a minute or two. Just for enough to get a yummy snack mm. and then come back to it and see what it needs. Gosh, I just keep, okay, one more, one more, one more. Here, here. You forgot to mention the sixth step. <laughs> the sixth step. Keep messing with it <laughs> Keep over going and back. over. Cool. Yeah. Okay, that feels good. Okay, wait, wait, wait oh, one more, one more, one more, one more. That's what I was going to say. Yep, same I, spot. I, really? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't mess with me like that, Keenan. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, I think we're good. <sighs> I'm like scared to say it's done because I feel like I could just keep on going, but I feel good where I landed. <clears throat> okay, now I feel good. Now I, I'm, I'm done, 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 okay. <laughs> wow. I hope you guys had fun painting with this. I hope that you allowed yourself to feel challenged and did not take that as anything more than you're outside of your comfort zone doing something harder than what you would normally do. And that's what I'm telling myself right now, right? This is a little bit more of a difficult project and water is kind of a beast to paint. And so at least understanding that it's like ins and outs and playing with bleeds and taking a step back for it and then going back in and taking a break from it. That's all part of the process. And that is totally necessary for you to get to a spot where you feel comfortable about it. So I hope you had fun with this. I hope that you played with colors and values and your bleed proof white and your glares. And um, I can't wait to see what you guys paint. Um, if you are on Facebook, you can join our watercolor community. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. It is a large group, but very kind and supportive. Share your art there. Give feedback there. Be kind to people there. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Thank you so much. Bye.